Today, I'm joined by one of the top sound designers in the entire music industry. And today, he's going to be breaking down exactly how he makes the perfect beat while I interview him and ask him some questions that the community wants to know. If you're not already familiar with The Wizard, he is the genius behind some of the top sound kits in the entire game, including the legendary Distra sound kit, the Deltron series, Tronaholics, as well as many, many more. He's teamed up with producers like D.Will, ProdDB, and a lot more in the industry to make some of the hardest hit drums and that being said I've got some special news for you guys almost two years ago the wizard and Brandon Knight dropped the first edition of the massive flesh sound kit this kit was a huge success notorious for its Halloween themed eerie sounds and after almost two years of waiting they're finally back with the second edition of the kit which is gonna be dropped exclusively on the producercrate.com right now there's a demo of the kit that you can grab hundred percent free to try out some of the sounds for yourself but it's only gonna be available until a couple days after this video is posted so i would pause this video make sure you leave a like of course and grab that kit right now without further ado let's get straight into the cook up and interview and p.s make sure you stick around until the end of the video because after the wizard cooks up his beat i'm gonna try out my own with the sauce that he gives us all right let's get right into it thank you thank you yeah i'm gonna just start just like clicking some just wanted to cook up with nope not that one Oh, that's not crazy. Just gonna put that as a, like an intro. Do you have any kind of strategy going into this? I just like to um, basically listen to the sample first, like all of his chops, and try to put it all together all at once in the beat. What's the sample from? We got this sample from Fishman3786. Shout out to Brandon who found that YouTube sample library channel. If you go to those YouTube sample channels, it feels like you're going to the vinyl store and you're listening to those vinyls. Okay, bet. I've never heard of that. I gotta check that out. Oh, I love that one too. Oh my God, there's so many good samples in here. What the hell? Oh yeah, finally getting into the kit. Let's go. Okay, I'm gonna do it like this way. Let's see what's the result. Of all the kits, like the Retro Mania Transphobia and Vintage Machine, one, that's my favorite sound. Fire. What's your strategy for hi-hat patterns? I like to start with them first. What Brandon taught me was if I start with the 808, like sometimes I do not understand how to get those bounce. The hi-hat always makes the bounce really different. So I'm just trying to see my idea here. And then after that, I'll just add on to what I can add more. Nice. Yeah, I'm a fan of starting with the hi-hats first too. Oh, what'd you do with the crossfade? So I just like put a laser on the crossfade just to like, you know, do something different. Like something I did, something new. Damn, that's crazy. Gotta use the sample settings. They gotta understand what the program is about. And I love this 808. One of my favorite 808. <laughs> yeah, no, that's just crazy. In a lot of your kits, you make some 808s that are like very out there, right? Like they're, they're a lot different than the typical 808s. How would you say is a good way for people to start learning how to use 808s that are like a little bit different? Cause I feel like most people are very used to using things like the spins and 
the Z808, for example, or like the CTM or like all these like very standard ones. So what would you say is a good way to start getting into some of those more experimental ones and, you know, make it sound good? I'll say this, do what makes you. If you're Stafford Beats, do what Stafford can do on those drums. What would you do? Everybody, people, they have their own way of how to cook up. How do they mix their own beats? How do they structure it? or what drum sounds they would use. Are you that type of person that is willing to make a same beats that is out there? Or are you that type of person who's trying to prove to the community that you are different out there? There are a lot of tricks, but what I did was I basically studied by myself of what is this program is about. And it's all about the delivery. That's what makes you your and your beats different. That's I think that's I think that's my answer try to be different that makes sense that's some sauce so really it just comes down to experimenting and trying different shit out until you figure out what works for you and you yeah know, sometimes you discover something crazy in the process there are no rules to this music stuff i like to use this plugin for stereo it can go ssl and this is it can go neve so it's neve and ssl combined together that's what i like about this plugin but i love neve side because it just sounds more natural i wrote this sample all the way here make this a signal to it so this is like a stereo chain this is a sample bus basically when you cook up with melodies would you say that more times than not you are adding some effects to it or do you find yourself using melodies like just as they are a lot i don't leave it how it is i mean it just depends on the melody so if i let's say for example specifically if i use this guy burgundy underscore prod i don't have to mix anything it just sounds perfect to my ears. So I guess it just depends on the sample. RX950. I like using this plugin. This is um analog converter. I like this a lot. Basically, I'm just gonna put it like that, put it like this, put it like that, and like that. Just route it like that. And this is gonna be my drum bus chain. This is gonna be my kick 808 chain, since kick and 808 are low ends. And so I'm just gonna like level this thing out first while I listen. I sometimes put a saw clipper on the master or, or I sometimes put a saw clipper on the bus. Just depends on what kind of beats I'm making. So what the saw clipper does to your beats basically is before it clips from your beat, it gives saturation on your beat. So if you take out the high end of your kick and then add a saw clipper on the master, it will automatically add a high end. So basically a saturation is a distortion, you know, and a distortion it focuses on the high end. That's what saw clipper does to your beats basically. And then... I like using this UAD um, capital compressor because it's a compressor that gives saturation and just like put it on the output and give it a saturator and shape it and headroom and threshold like minus three attack and release and ratio all the way up and just like mix it out that's what i like to do on my 808 same as the um the drum i just do the same thing and after that if i want to mix it differently for the clap let's say i want make the clap sound more sharp i like using ssl 4000 a lot and i just like raise above the um the high and the low a little bit i don't want to take away the low end of the clap in the snare because that's like taking out the body of the clap in the snare so i love enjoying watching those mix engineers how they mix the beats perfectly so that my so that we can learn from them and make our beat stand out perfectly All right.
This is sounding crazy already. Vampire. On those 80s films, they had narrations. So I just wanted to bring up that narration so it's fun and producers can have a lot of good ways to create this fucking beat. October 26th, we're gonna be dropping the full version of this kit and it's crazy. Make sure you head down to the description and grab the free Massive Flesh 2 demo ASAP so you can start cooking, first of all. And then second of all, get ready for the big release because this is about to be fucking crazy. Yep. Please cop it. <laughs> yeah, please cop please it. Please cop it. We really worked so hard on that. <laughs> Over a year, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. And everybody loved the first version, so I'm sure they're going to absolutely love this. Like, it's, it's literally packed with so many more sounds, so many more effects. Like, you know even more somehow about sound design now, which is crazy because you literally, like... It doesn't even seem like there's anything more for you to learn in sound design. It seems like you fucking mastered all of it already. I still got a lot of ways to go and learn. I'm still a student. Absolutely. That's how you know you got that shit, bro, because you're already like one of the top in the game and you're still hungry to learn. Yeah. There's a lot to be said about that. Anyways, let's get back to this cook up. I'm just going to add some effects. Dang, that's crazy, bro. Especially like once you start getting all the the sound effects and everything in there, I feel like that adds such a unique element to the beat. I would say like effect is really important to add on your beat. Okay, I'm just gonna add my tag. There is your vampire. That tag's so yeah. hard. Shout out to Not So Thug Game. There is What are you adding on shaper box i just put it like decay five percent just a little bit of reverb so it creates the room of your beat oh you did that on the master that's yeah. crazy just i just like to make it more room for my beat so it sounds loud and you know just like how we how we did in the 80s yeah, this beat sounds absolutely crazy right think that's about it yeah that's a good beat i'm not gonna lie That sounds really beautiful. Please go cop Master Flesh 2. That shit's crazy. It makes some different beats every single time with that. Do you have any last advice? Keep creating. Be yourself. That's all I could say. Most definitely, man. Well, we definitely appreciate you uh, being on here. That was a crazy cook up. And I'm about to try some of that sauce myself on my own beat. We'll see how it goes. Hell yeah. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, man, you have a good rest of your day. 24 hours later. So yesterday we called the wizard and got some crazy sauce. I'm talking stupid gems on how to make some fire original and unique beats. So I wrote down some notes based on what he was saying, and I'm going to try applying it to my own beat. All right, so step one was finding a fire sample on YouTube. I found this Nightmare on Elm. I'm going to go ahead and use the Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm going to go ahead and use this. It's the Nightmare on Elm Street soundtrack. I'm not going to preview it, though, because I don't want to get a copyright strike. But let's go ahead and find some places where we can cut up the sample.
Oh, that's hard. Dang, there's really going to be a lot of different plays we could sample on this. I really like that part. All right, let's chop this up here. Okay, like right there should be good. Let's see if we can use this part to find the BPM. It sounds like 100 BPM. Let's see. Almost. I'm going to cut this part and drag it in here. All right, so let me reset the pitch on it. And I'm going to consolidate this part and drag it out using this. Oh, and that loops really nice, I bet. Oh, that's fire. What? All right, let's see what else we can find. I already know I'm going to use this part. I use one of my favorite plugins. I'll be using this a lot. If you guys are mad at me for using this so much, then blame me in the comments and I will use something else. But I love this plugin so much. Oh yeah, especially like this because we could consolidate this part, right? And then boom. Oh, okay. I have an idea. I have an idea. Uh, okay. Bet, 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 bet. Now I am going to use sound shifter, which is going to pitch it up and down a little bit, which is nice. I like doing that. Okay, that's fire. Let's dive into this kid. He said he likes using the trap phobia clap one. Let's definitely move the tempo up. Oh, these are both fire. I'm going to use the hi-hat 14. And DeWizard said he starts with the hi-hat. So let's do that before we do our 808s. I also noticed he used the crossfade on the laser, which is pretty interesting. Oh, it sounds crazy. What? Yup. All right, one thing I like doing with my open hats is I turn the hold knob all the way up, kind of like you would do with an 808, because then you can just control when it stops. And sometimes that adds a really nice bounce. You got to remember, silence is one of the best instruments there is. Damn. That's crazy. Literally every time that I've clicked on a sound, it's like the first one that I use is the one that I want. All right, let's add some reverb. Oh my God, not that one. I don't have that one. And it sounds like it just goes up one like that. I really like this Dr. Hoyd key too. I actually used this one shot on my last video and it was super fire. I just want to make this really dissonant and hard. All right, and then let's use the same 808 that Wiz was using, which is the Trap Phobia 808 23. Oh. He also used decapitator. Let's try that. I like this effect a lot. It adds a lot of energy. So let's try it out here. Oh, I like this low one. That's different. One thing I've been doing a little bit more with my hi-hats is putting a phaser on it. Literally just the default settings.
And then the last thing to Wizard said he does a lot is he puts different effects on his melodies. So let's try throwing some on. And that's honestly it for this beat. So I'll play the final beat using all of the wizard's advice at the end of this video. But other than that, go ahead and comment down below what the most useful piece of advice he gave you was. And I'm also going to put a link in the description for the free drum kit that we dropped. It's only going to be free for a couple more days after this video is posted. So make sure you grab it ASAP. On October 26th, we're going to be dropping the full version of this kit, which is going to have a ridiculous amount of sounds. And I highly recommend you try it out. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And follow the wizard on Instagram if you haven't already. He literally drops so much sauce all the time. Anyways, here's the full beat, and I'll see you next time.